Today, we're going to do another episode of what's in the box. We only got two small boxes, but let's see what we got. Broke my knife up a little bit, so I need to replace my blade. some stickers. One is Drift Life. I know it's hard to see with the uh, lighting and stuff in here, but <clears throat> and then we have Level Ride Concepts. Level Ride Concepts. All right, and Drift Life. All right, the product we have. So we're doing the IS 300 and. That thing has, we've put the dual caliper brakes on it, and we have, let's see, what all we've done to that thing? I don't know what all we've done. We've tore the interior out of it. My son's wanting to completely gut the car, but we got to put the e-brake handle on it. Okay, so what we got here, this thing is a universal plate, so like, when you can't figure out where you want your e-brake or if you don't want to weld it to you know maybe around the the shifter and all that well what this plate actually does is where your shifter would live here and it's bolted down your shifter boots bolted down with four bolts so you just unbolt those four bolts and you put this plate on it and then this gives you this side piece and allows you to mount your e-brake handle here so that way you're not cutting, welding, drilling into the body of your car. Seems easy enough. Well, what the cool thing is, it's universal. So it being universal, you can go either side. So if you want the e-brake on this side. See, some of your seats, and this actually put it beside it instead of, you know, so much in front of it. And it'll give you more travel forwards and backwards. But the downside to this style is when you put your seat in, some of your seats are wider. And so that, in the... Uh, depending on which style of e-brake, if you've got one where the reservoir is on the back of the, which is the style we have, of the back of the actual assembly, that's going to be kind of in the way of the driver and the way the um, brake line has to fuel or feed up and hook up to that. Sometimes that brake line can get in the way of the shifter if you're here. But if you come this way, it's going to be on to the driver's leg, you know. So what we may opt to do, we're going to try it both ways, depending on how wide the, the cockpit is on the driver's side and the seat, how wide it sets. Um, we're probably thinking we're going to have to put it on the passenger side like that, on this side. So you have to drill your own holes, you have to disassemble the piece, lay your base plate here, um, mark your holes and stuff, and then drill them. And so once you get those drilled, then you get you some nuts and washers and bolts, and you actually mount this on here. The cool thing about this is, again, that you can retain the use of your e-brake handle if you get a different car, if you change you know, the handle itself, it's no big feat to, to take it out and you can you know, probably have more room to drill different holes here and that type of thing. So that allows you to have a lot of options by using this plate. So we decided to use this plate because if we weld the existing one that we have in place and we don't like it or it just doesn't work for some reason, we don't have any other options besides cut it loose and you know, maybe weld it somewhere else, maybe damage the body of the car some more. So we're going to give this a shot, see if this will bring us to where we want it to actual sit. And if we don't, then we can proceed with, you know, drilling to the car or welding it there. But I think this will give us what we want either, again, on the driver's side or reverse it on the passenger side. Um, and then you can determine what feels comfortable for you as you're, you're, you know, you begin drifting. So that's the first thing that's in the box today. And today... We got us another one, another small item. It's actually really heavy. What this is, is I've got a 99 F250 Super Duty. Well, if you've ever owned a Ford truck, I don't know what all years, but I know the, the 90s, 2000s, somewhere in that era, the cool packs are notorious for having issues. The, the boots wear out, the, the cool packs break down from heat and they just overall start causing issues. Again, when I had a mechanic shop, we dealt with Fords a lot, but have cool pack issues. And so what happens, what's going on with mine, 
is it's, it's odd it's got a valve cover leak and I guess when the valve covers leak they you know it leaks down the boot inside where the tube seals are well it's a chore to pull all that out well if you take shop vac and vacuum out where the hole is and clean it out you won't have to deal with it for a long 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 time well if you don't drive it a lot the other side the driver's side of the engine the second or third one back I guess it has a water leak maybe at some place and it will get moisture on like the third one back and so when you go to drive it and it's got a horrible miss you end up with for some reason moisture inside these inside the tube seals down in the holes where the spark plugs live so I've had this truck probably I would say seven eight years maybe maybe ten I may have had it that long and this is probably the third set of cool packs and they're super super cheap off of eBay I mean you pay 40 50 bucks for 10 every three or four years um, and that truck at one time I drove that truck every day that's the only truck I drove and and it's sat for quite a while now and now that we've tried to drive it some my son's driving it now that the IS 300 on the lift and, and getting the makeover for the drift stuff and we may end up pulling a trailer with it to pull the drift cars to the track it's got a, a horrible miss and instead of fighting it and I pulled one or two and looked at them and these rubber boots get real real soft and end up I guess just been super thin and flexible and almost just deteriorated and I guess that's over time heat or just the cheaper versions of them but when I got that truck I put new injectors in it new coil packs and it ran like a brand new truck um, so just every time I change these coil packs out it seems to fix the mess um, and those are horrible about the so what it'll do you'll put your screw in or whatever and it bolts it down well the Fords and I don't know why they didn't recall this probably because it probably would have cost them a fortune but on the Fords and the heads in the I forget whatever uh, version of the Ford engine that is but they have four and a half threads in the spark plug hole and it's an aluminum head and the spark plug has a steel shank on it so you like have to change the plugs when they're hot you if you over torque them you'll strip them I've literally drilled and tapped and put inserts in five of them where they popped out the truck was actually had one that way when when I bought it I got a super good deal on it and so I drilled that tapped it ran great put new cool packs and everything in it new injectors great truck and then another one popped out same scenario I drill it tap it and this over the years 10 12 years whatever I've had that truck um, the same thing it's had them just it just spits them out it strips the hole out and you end up having to you drill it out with a drill and make it oversized then you tap it and then you put what they call a time cert down in it and you put that time cert in it put your new spark plug in it then put your coal in it a lot of times when it spits them up out of there it breaks the ears off of these things so um, if you've dealt with that that's definitely a pain but you gotta watch your Fords it's the V8s I think the the Triton engines is what it is I think some of the V8s some of the V6s the V10s do it and you may be fortunate to never have that issue I just know at the dealership it's about a $400 uh, spark plug change because of that very reason because you have to heat them and try to take them out with the impact because you have to do it so fast it doesn't damage the thread there's there's a lot of different theories of what works for people and so that's the deal with the Fords but back to changing the coil packs on, out on that thing it usually gets us gets us back to where it doesn't have any miss it's got a horrible horrible miss in it probably two of the cylinders are, are in bad shape and it's probably the combination of where the oil's in that second cylinder on the passenger side and the third or fourth cylinder on the driver's side where it's been sitting so we're going to try to remedy that with this so that's one of the things we're working on too to get our one of our tow trucks or pulling trucks hauling trucks whatever you want. it's a, it's one of my work trucks it's a 99 beat all pieces four wheel drive it's a great truck this thing i mean has a ton of miles um besides the just little stuff like this and the spark plug i've never had any major overhauls no kind of major deals with that truck transmission does great um four wheel drive does great it does wear tires from time to time it's just been an, overall it's been a pretty good truck considering you know with the once I figured out how to do the first one wasn't that bad I was afraid of it drilled it tapped it worked great once I realized how to do it and what to do wasn't that bad 
The last one that happened was on, it's the V10, and so it's real deep set into the cab, underneath the cab of the truck. Well, the passenger side, very, very back one, it's the worst one. And that's the last one that went last time that I had to drill and tap out. So the worst one's done. So all the rest should be easier than the bad one that I've I done last time. So as long as it don't come out, we're good. But these things are hard to get to. Um, but if you over tighten these bolts, when you put them back in, it strips out. There's just several things you have to watch for when installing these, but that's our one of our projects we're working on. And that's just going to be like a maintenance um, thing. And, and like, again, what I'll do is I'll take a shop vac and I'll take a small vacuum hose and put like a, a trash bag or some kind of plastic bag over the hole. And so that'll feed my vacuum line out and, and it'll seal the actual shop vac hose. And that vacuum line will be just a small quarter inch something. And I can dip it down into each hole of the um where the spark plug tubes go and down in the tubes and vacuum out any trash any water any oil residue and pull all that out and usually when you pull these out you can see which ones are wet and that's usually where you get your mess from is the the fluid the water the oil arcing off in your plug not getting the full contact it needs through the inside of the wire in here and so it starts arcing off the side of the walls and the in the spark plugs not getting your spark so Hondas will do that too. Anything that's got a tube seal, if it ever has a leak down the tube, any kind of oil or moisture, it causes it to arc off and that'll, that'll give you a mess. So if you, ever, if you have any kind of Hondas or anything that has a tube seal like this that seals and you know around the valve cover goes around it and it takes a tube to seal that piece, any of those that will leak like that will cause a mess. So if you have a mess in a Honda or anything that's got the tube seal, pull your spark plug wires out or your cool packs and look for oil down these. I think some of the the Nissans, like the 350Zs and, and some of those VQ motors, I think have tube seals like this. A lot of engines do. But if you have a miss, that's a good place to look and start. And it's not always that you have to replace them. Sometimes it's just that you got to dry them. Vacuum them out, get the moisture out, the oil. If there's a, you know, a, maybe your hood's leaking down the back of it, it's dripping down and it somehow manages its way past the seal here which I think that's all it is. You could probably put some, maybe some silicone or some kind of dielectric grease on the neck of these and probably keep that from happening. So, maybe the, the answer for you if you've got that problem. So that's something that I've dealt with several times on this truck between that and the spark plug issues. Um, never really had any other issues out of that truck. So that's what we got here. That's what we got for the IS300 to continue to drift build. And that is what was in the box. Alright guys, hey thanks for watching today. Um, we got a lot more coming. We're still working on the IS300. We're trying to button it up. We're waiting on some differential bushings now that the plates came. So I can get that, um, finish up the brake system on that thing. And then when the bushings come we can reset the rear end. And change coil packs on the truck. Going to the next project, I think the 350Z, I gotta drop the fuel tank on it and try to find the leak. We should be ready to drift pretty soon, so stay tuned. Follow us on uh, Instagram at Chesser Drifting. We got some new decals coming. I'll show those things to you when they get here. I think this coming week they're supposed to show up. Uh, wristbands, our lanyards, you may have seen them by now. Um, follow us on uh, um, Facebook. On Facebook, it's Chesser Motorsports. On, if you need to email us for anything, if there's any questions, any anything um, in particular you want to talk about, you can um, give us messages through Facebook, Instagram, email, chesserenterprises at yahoo.com. Comment on our videos, um, and if you want to subscribe, hey, we'd appreciate that. And if you want to continue to catch our videos, hit the little bell, and on the little bell, you just click it. Every time we post, every time we post a video, you'll get an alert, let you know we've posted another video. Alright guys, thanks for watching.